Hello and welcome to Nobody E News Racial Trivia Series, where we focus on a particular race from the Warcraft universe and discuss both its history and any alteration in the World of Warcraft's game by Blizzard. Today's racial trivia is on the Red Dragonflight, which is ruled by the Dragon Queen herself, Alex Straza. The Red Dragonflight is a noble and honorable flight of dragons, and they are considered to be some of the greatest protectors of life, as well as Azeroth itself. They are mostly found protecting sacred areas and items, seeking to keep them from lesser beings that might be unintentionally harmed by the artifact's unstable and powerful magics. Their breath is a fearsome stream of molten fire, and they have been known on more than one occasion to swallow enemies whole, who meet a gruesome death as they are slowly digested over the course of days. The Red Dragons are very impulsive, though they are intelligent beyond mortal comprehension and wise, they are action-oriented and bound by their honor, making them most hated enemies, the Black Dragonflight, which was ruled by the terrifying Dark Leviathan, Deathwing. Like all the other Dragonflights, the Red Dragonflight is also a host of a wide variety of draconic kind. This includes Red Worms, Red Dragons, Red Drakes, Red Whelps, Red Dragon Spawns, and Red Dragonids. It should be noted that even though all of the Dragon Flights have more or less the same varieties, each flight shares similar capabilities and powers, as well as their own unique flight powers. It has been observed that this is not only the case with the great aspects, but also with the variants of all the flight creatures as well. Today, we're going to start by examining the Great Dragon Queen herself and the whole of the Red Dragonflight. So to start off, we're going to be looking at Warcraft RPG Shadow and Light, page 88 through 90, under Alexstrasza the Life Binder. Alexstrasza, also known as the Dragon Queen and the Great Red Leviathan, is one of the three great dragons who fought against the demons during the War of the Ancients. Later, she helped create Nordrazil, the world tree, by placing a magical corn within the second well of eternity. For some time after, she and her fellow red dragons were at peace, but over time, they began to argue about how best to shelter and protect the world. The rise to power of humans and other races left many believing that these new peoples were dangerous and should be destroyed, while others of Alexstrasza's ilk felt they should be educated to teach them right from wrong. When Alexstrasza later disappeared, the Red Dragonflight began a desperate search for her, only to fall prey to Deathwing's depredations. Those of the Red Dragonflight, who survived, eventually discovered that the orcs had captured their queen and were using her offspring as pawns in the Second War. Outraged, many of the Red Dragons wanted to make war against all the lesser races, but the rescue of Alexstrasza by Ronan and his allies taught them that perhaps the ground-dwelling mortals could be good after all. Today, Alexstrasza remains distant and aloof, avoiding the entanglements of Azeroth's humanoid races and remaining strictly neutral in their wars. She prefers peace and solitude, although she will defend her lands with all her power against any who threaten them without due cause. She often uses her shape-change power to appear as a creature of nature in order to see what encroaching mortals will do before revealing her presence. Alexstrasza is devoted to all forests and, to a lesser extent, all other types of green and fertile growing things. She considers all natural woodlands her home, and she need fear no beasts within such lands. Although many of Azeroth's natural creatures revered the great red leviathan, she is not a goddess and does not pretend to be otherwise. Alexstrasza is rarely venerated by any particular group, although some elven communities pay her homage. Druids of the Wild, in particular, appreciate her serene presence 
considering her second in importance only to Ursula. This next passage is found in Warcraft RPG Manual of Monsters, page 37 through 38, under Red Dragon. The dragon's scaled hide shimmers in the sun like countless rubies. Its long neck is a graceful arc as its noble rigid head takes in the surroundings. Its golden eyes gleam with great wisdom. Under Description Red dragons have a bearing in stature that recalls the fact that they once ruled as lords over all dragon kind. This nobility is reflected in every aspect of a red dragon. From its proud demeanor to its aura, not one that inspires fear, but rather awe. It is as deliberating as the terrifying presence other dragons possess, except that it overwhelms with a beatific aura. Red dragons exemplify the serenity of life and nature. Legends hold that wherever a red dragon walks upon the earth or burns the soil with its flaming breath, the earth is renewed. Although red dragons use fire to protect and punish, the flames always give way for new life. Under Red Dragon Society The Red Flight was once charged with the protection of all living things and to keep peace in the wild lands of Azeroth. Alas, in time, their vision became clouded. Humanoid races were in an uprising, and some red dragons insisted that they must make war upon them to protect the wilderness. Others believed that the mortal races could be educated, ensuring new allies and bettering the world. This led to a great argument that caused a schism within the Red Flight, one that has never been repaired. The crisis was compounded when they discovered that their aspect, Alexstrasza, was missing. The Red Dragons scattered to search for her, making them easy prey for Deathwing in his Black Flight. Isolated, leaderless, and confused, the Reds fought back as best they could. At last, they drove back Deathwing's minions and forced a tenuous detente. This effort caused the Reds to abandon their hunt for their great queen. When they could resume the quest at last, they discovered that orcs were guilty of capturing the Dragon Queen and even of raising her recent offspring for use in the Second War. This outrage was redressed when mortals helped free Alexstrasza. The Red Flight resumed its ancient charge of defending the wild things of the wild. And finally, under combat. Red dragons are honorable and fight on even terms, if battling honorable or worthy opponents. They will sacrifice their aerial advantage if they are met fairly on the ground. The Red Dragon's wrath, however, dispenses with honor when facing those they consider dishonorable, any evil creatures, as well as orcs. Such beings are to be expunged with every instinct and ability that Red Dragons possess. Red dragons prefer to use flame to entrap enemies and force them to difficult terrain, using their aerial advantage for greater mobility. They prefer to destroy an opposing force's leadership first, ruining its power structure and hopefully setting younger or less experienced combatants to flight. So the culture of the red dragons is more conservative and family-oriented, than any of the other dragon flights. They are utterly loyal to their aspect Alexstrasza, who along with her consorts such as Tyrannistras and Coralstras, are treated with great respect by the Reds and the other flights. The Reds are typically the only dragons mortals are likely to encounter with the exception of the Druidic allies of the Greens. Like all dragons, they take their charges very seriously and usually operate in secrecy, keeping tabs on important beings, organizations, and places. 
For example, they used to keep tabs on Cenarius, Dalaran, and the Scourge. As a result, the Red Dragonflight's agents are often away from their home, spreading themselves very thin throughout Azeroth, and using their powers to disguise themselves as members of the mortal races, such as humans or elves, in their secret covert op missions. Like all dragons, the Reds have the ability to create illusions on themselves and upon others. Often, the dragons have mortals, dragon sworn, working on gathering information or doing other related errands on their behalf. All this is done to maintain harmony in the prosperity of life, the task entrusted to their aspect and carried out through the flight itself. Due to Alex Strauss's influence, the Red Dragon Flight see themselves as custodians and defenders of life on Azeroth. Red Dragons understand the secrets of life and in turn those of death like none of the other flights, and they have been granted greater power over both due to their immense respect and devotion to the preservation of life and a fearful respect of death. They are capable of rejuvenating and draining life, as well as performing a form of necromancy, though they only use this as a last resort, as they are not fond of using black magic. The breath of a red dragon burns, but also rejuvenates, and wherever a red dragon walks or breathes upon the soil, the earth is renewed. While red dragons are the protectors of life, they will not hesitate to kill a creature if its actions endanger other lives without due cause. Many members of the Red Flight still remain distrustful towards mortals, especially the Orcs, citing they have brought only danger and death into the world. Generally, though, the Red Dragons are friendly to humans, elves, and their other traditional allies. For the most part, it is the representatives of the Flight near Grim Batol who acted strangely hostile to any outsiders. The Drake Actros and the dragon spawn located there will attack adventurers on sight. Adult red dragons most often have names ending in straws for male or straws for female. When taking humanoid form, red dragons most often choose human, high elven, or blood elven form. The history of the red dragons begins with the titans. As we have covered numerous times, before the Titans departed Azeroth, they charged the Dragon Aspects with the task of watching over it. See my previous video, The Charge of the Dragons, under Warcraft History and Lore, for more details. Aenar, the Titan patron of all life, gave some of her own power to Alexstrasza, and the years following this event came to be known as the Age of Dragons. The Red Dragons were numerous and coexisted peacefully with the other flights. All the flights worked together to safeguard the world, and keep it peaceful and in harmony. But the Red Dragons also ruled over the other flights under the Dragon Queen herself. But this age would mean a disastrous ruin and a catastrophe that changed the world forever. At some point prior to the War of the Ancients, Notharian was driven mad and led his flight in a massive coup to kill the other aspects and control the world. Notharian had fallen prey to the dark whisperings of the old gods, whom corrupted Netherian's essence itself. When Ashara and her highborn summoned the demons to Azeroth, Notharian finally began his operation. The Reds and the other flights sought a way to push back the Burning Legion, and Notharian presented them with an exceptionally powerful weapon, which he had forged, to deter the demons with. As you all know, it was the Demon Soul, also known as the Dragon Soul. This powerful weapon required all of the aspects to empower the device with the portion of their own power. After doing so, the Red Dragonflight joined the others in the battle against the demons, and the Black Aspect unleashed the Dragon Soul's power with devastating effects on the Burning Legion. He, however, used this opportunity to attack the Elven Defenders. The other flights were shocked at his sudden assault and they rushed to stop the Mad Aspect, but they were unable to act against the powers Notharian held in his claw. The power they had placed in it put them at his mercy. Malagos, however, and his flight managed to break free and attempted to stop the Black Leviathan and destroy the Demon Soul, but they failed to do so and were nearly wiped out entirely. Notharian decimated the Blue Dragonflight, and he banished the Reds, Greens, and Bronzes from the battle. 
Following this betrayal, the surviving red, green, and bronze dragons secluded themselves, hoping to recover from the dragon soul's powers. Though the legion was ultimately pushed back, the damage to draconic kind had been done. As we know, immediately after the Sundering, to ensure Deathwing Notharian would never hold power over Dragonkind again, Alex Straza, Yersera, and Nostormu placed an enchantment upon the Demon Soul, so that no dragon could ever wield it, and they hid the foul disk deep beneath the earth. The trio later visited the Night Elf survivors to present the devastated race with the gift. Alex Straza produced a single enchanted acorn taken from the mother tree Gahanar, and placed it within the new well of eternity, atop Mount Hyjal. The acorn activated by the potent magical waters sprung to life as a colossal tree whose mighty roots grew from the well's waters, and its verdant canopy scraped at the roof of the sky. The tree also received blessings from Yersra and Nasdormu. It would safeguard the new well of eternity from discovery, and come to be known as Nordrazil, the world tree. Years following this, a bloody and drawn-out war between the Black Dragon flight and the other flights ensued and decimated the species, with all flights losing members, and the Reds were no exception to this. The Dragon flights haunted the Blacks to the brink of extinction, but were greatly weakened by their sacrifice to the Demon Soul. Ultimately, the Blacks were nearly wiped out, though the other flights never truly recovered from those dark times, and they were never again seen in the same numbers as before. A thousand years prior to the opening of the Dark Portal, the Red Dragons lent their aid to the Night Elves and the Bronze Dragonflight during the War of the Shifting Sands. Led by Kelestras, child of Alexstrasza, the Reds fought the Silted and their Karaji masters furiously, and ultimately helped push them back to their city where they were sealed away from the world. The dragons suffered few casualties, but the progeny of Alexstrasza, Kelestras, was until recently believed lost, having charged deep into Ankaraj during the final push. After the war, a shard of the Scepter of the Shifting Sands was entrusted to the Red Worm, Valestras, by Anachronos, the Bronze. During the Second War, Deathwing finally found a way to conquer his greatest rivals, while he couldn't wield the demon soul himself, it could be placed in the hands of one that would further his own agenda. The orc shaman Zulahed received visions of a powerful artifact deep within the earth, and with Doomhammer's permission, took his clan to search for its source. Zulahed took the demon soul for the horde, but while he sensed the disc had the power to raise mountains and evaporate oceans, it was unresponsive to his shamanistic powers. The device was later passed down to his lieutenant, the warlock Necro Skullcrusher, whose magic the disc eagerly reciprocated. The Dragon Maw clan searched for weeks for the dragons, finally spotting a lone wounded red male. They followed the dragon back to the Red Flight's lair, a high mountain peak where they came upon the Dragon Queen herself, roosting with three consorts. The aspect immediately incinerated four orc warriors before Necros invoked the dark powers of the disc and subdued her. The demon soul was used to enslave Alexstrasza and a very large portion of her flight. For eight long years, Alexstrasza was forced to create more dragons for the horde's use in the war, and she cried for the deaths of her children and the deaths they caused in turn. Two of her consorts did not survive long. One perished while trying to escape over the sea, and the other dying of injuries inflicted by Deathwing, while her fourth and youngest avoided capture altogether. This left Alexstrasza with only her prime consort, Tyrannistras, to produce dragons with for the orcs. Alexstrasza often tried to defy Necros' cruel agenda and orders, but the act of breaking one or more eggs and her presence ensured her cooperation, and willingness in her part. The Red Dragon Flight, once one of the strongest and proudest flights of dragons ever to be seen, were reduced to being the Horde's war dogs and slaves. The Horde quickly learned how to utilize the great leviathans, and they were forced to wreak havoc throughout the lands of the Alliance, 
committing destructive acts, such as setting the forests of Quelthalos ablaze, and the complete destruction of the third fleet of Cole Tyras. The Alliance responded with dwarven griffin riders, the two often meeting in the dogfights over Lordaeron and Chasmodan. Throughout most of the Second War, and even a few years after its end, the settlements of the Alliance lived in constant fear of coming under attack by Red Dragons and their Orc Riders. The Reds who had avoided capture by the Orcs were initially bewildered to find their queen had gone missing. The flight scattered to the four corners of Azeroth, searching for her, becoming easy prey for the vicious Deathwing in his black dragon flight. Isolated, leaderless, and confused, the Reds fought back as best they could. The constant attacks from the Blacks forced the Reds to postpone their search and launch a decisive counterattack to keep the Blacks at bay, leaving their mission to find their beloved queen behind. When the Blacks had been sufficiently pushed back, the Reds resumed their search and found after several years had passed, eventually discovered the Orcs were responsible for Alexstrasza and the rest of the flight's disappearance and were horrified to learn they were using her offspring as cannon fodder in the Second War. Outraged, many of the Red Dragons wanted to make war against all the lesser races and eradicate them off of Azeroth for good, but her youngest consort, Krellstras, disguised as the mage Crossus of the Kirintor, sought a way to free his mate. After the Horde's defeat in the Second War, the Dragon Maw clan retained a firm grip on Grim Batol and on Alexstrasza. Her rescue only became possible when Necros believed the Alliance planned on invading. Necros had Alexstrasza and her eggs moved out of the mountain fortress and began to move towards Dun Algaz, where he believed the bulk of the Dragon Maw clan was stationed and preparing for war. Little did he know he had been manipulated by Deathwing yet again to follow this path so he could steal Alexstrasza's eggs. When Deathwing appeared, Necros sent Tyrannistras to face him, but the old Red Consort didn't last long against the Black Aspect. Necros was then shocked when he was assaulted by an army of mountain dwarves, and in the ensuing chaos, lost the demon soul to Ronin, a mage of Dalaran, who was sent on a mission to rescue the Dragon Queen by none other than the red dragon Krellstras in his mortal guise. Once free of the device's power, Alexstrasza killed Necros out of pure hatred and a mad drive for vengeance. The demon soul was then undone, and the power that was vested in it returned to all of the aspects. Alexstrasza, along with Malagas, Nasdormu, and Yersera proceeded to attack Deathwing, finally punishing him for his treachery and driving him away. Before giving chase, Alexstrasza swore an oath of friendship to Ronan, Verisa, and Valstad, and their respective races for their rescue of not just the Dragon Queen herself, but the whole of the Red Dragonflight as well. With Alexstrasza returned to them, the remaining members of the Red Dragonflight came out of hiding and resumed their ancient charge of defending the wild things of the world. All but a few members of the Red Dragonflight were freed from the Dragon Maul clan's control. Following Deathwing's defeat, Red Dragonflight guardians were placed outside Grim Patol, under the leadership of the worm Gar Shalon, assisted by the eager young dragon Akridostras, the dragon spawn flame tongue captain Baleflame, and legions of red dragon spawn eager to guard the remnants of the red dragon flight. Explorer Braun Bronzebeard managed to speak with Akridostras and was told the reds were guarding a secret that living creatures are not meant to know. The Red Dragonflight was nearly absent from the Third War, entailing the battle against the Second Coming of the Burning Legion, when the mortal races banded together and overcame Archimon at the climatic battle of Mount Hyjal. In the aftermath, Red Dragon Guardians were stationed at Hyjal Summit, where they along with the Blues, Greens, and Bronzes guard the World Tree from another attack by the remnants of the Burning Legion from Dark Whisper Gorge. In addition, Red and Green Dragons were sent to Sunwell Grove to investigate and guard the remains of the Sunwell. 
Kraustras took it upon himself to gather the remaining energy of the Sunwell and transformed it into a living avatar in the form of Envina Teague, whose identity was revealed by Kraustras after an incident involving the traitorous Darkon Drather trying to claim her powers as his own. Over a decade after Deathwing's defeat at the Battle of Grimpatol, the Red Dragonflight forces stationed outside the cursed fortress of Grimpatol started falling ill, some even dying. Some were driven mad and had to be put down by their brothers and sisters. The Red Flight finally did as many others had done before them and abandoned the dark fortress of Grimpatol, unaware of the black dragon, Syntheria, deep within. Kraustras sensed something happening deep within the mountain, and returned to Grimpatol to find the Black Consort in the midst of creating the Twilight Dragonflight. Ultimately, thanks to Kraustras's allies, the sacrifice of the Nether Dragon, Zaraku, and the anger felt by Dargonax towards his mother, Syntheria, and her creation were finally defeated. The mountain was once again abandoned, but it, everyone was unaware that Deathwing still lurked deeper within. In World of Warcraft, the Red Dragonflight once had a strong presence at Alex Shaw's old prison, Grimpa Toll. Their guardianship of the fortress can be seen, with legions of Red Dragon spawn and the Drake champion, Actros, stationed outside. Further down the mountain, the remains of the Orcish caravan is teeming with newly hatched Red Whelps. Kelestras, thought to have been lost during the War of the Shifting Sands, was recently found to be alive inside on Karash, as a slave of Cthune, along with Aragos and Marithra. The Dark Master of Ankaraj used the tortured dragons to power his new creations, Moam, and the other obsidian destroyers. Kandrostras came to Ankaraj after sensing his trapped brethren within, but dares not travel into the temple from fear of falling under the old god's control. The Red Dragon agent, Balistras, is secretly working against his rival Nefarian in Blackrock Spire. He assists any adventurers willing to fight against the legions of Dragonkin and the Dark Horde, and gaining access to his innermost lair. Upon breaching Blackwing Lair, Valistras succumbs to Nefarian's will, and asks to be put out of his misery, lest he further serve the Lord of Blackrock. Belnistras has been captured by the Scourge inside Razorfin Downs while investigating their presence there, he asks any adventurers brave enough to free him to assist him in shutting down the Quillbor's operation there. The High Elf Garrick, mortal servant of the Red Dragon, Kraustras, has been spotted in the Badlands, monitoring the Black Dragonflight, and searching for assistance in slaying the twin Black Drakes, Black Lash and Hematis. In Wrath of the Lich King, Malagos declared war upon mortal spellcasters, citing the reckless usage of magic that would inevitably lead to Azeroth's downfall. This sudden declaration of war from Malagos would begin a greater and more devastating war called the Nexus War. Charged with the preservation of life, the Red Dragonflight condemned the Blue's increasingly militaristic methods and vowed to neutralize Malagos at all costs. To this end, they have formed a council with the Kirintor, and have begun actively subverting Malagasy's campaign in the Burian Tundra. Many members of the Red Flight, including Alex Straza and her Prime Consort, can be found at Wormrest Temple and the Dragon Blight. They lead the Wormrest Accord, an alliance of the remaining four Dragon Flights, defending the temple against the Blue Flight. Recently, the Undead Scourge has laid siege to the surrounding five Dragon Shrines, in an effort to raise terrifying new variations of undead dragons. To arrest these invasions, Alexstrasza has begun recruiting heroes to aid Sarastras and Vargastras in the Ruby Dragon Shrine's defense against the Lich King. In Cataclysm, after the fall of the Lich King, the Red Dragonflight's troubles were not yet over when a clutch of Twilight Dragonflight eggs were discovered within the Obsidian Sanctum Kraustras asked the Council of Six to send adventurers to destroy them. The deed was done quickly and without fanfare or acknowledgement. At first, all seemed quiet, but then all communication with the Guardians in the Ruby Sanctum ceased. The Guardians stationed at the portal were slain, and the Mystic Stones shattered. The implication of the Ruby Sanctum being breached are dire, and little is known of the identity of the attackers. 
as the Black Dragon Flight's numbers in Northrend seemed too limited to have pulled off such an attack. What power would dare to attack the stronghold of the Red Dragon Flight, and how did they get past the guards undetected? The reemergence of Deathwing has prompted Alexstrasza to take matters into her own hands in the Twilight Highlands. This currently sums up the Red Dragon Flight. As we can see, the Red Flight has some of the most detailed history of the dragon species, though this is most likely due to the fact that they were the first dragons introduced into the story of Warcraft. It would also later be revealed that the Reds are among the more powerful dragons of their species after Blizzard added the other dragons to the world. The greatest change I would have to say about the Reds is that Blizzard greatly altered the Reds' appearances over and over again, practically to the point of new design altogether. The Reds truly don't even represent anything what they once looked like, or even resemble how they originally looked. The second thing I would have to say is that they were perceived originally as being evil, but ironically it was explained that they are actually the protectors of life and were enslaved by the Horde, which makes sense. The Reds never were truly evil, but due to the Orcs, they were trained in the methods of being evil and barbaric raiders, often being abused and beaten. I'm not personally sure if the Orcs mutated the Reds with their Warlock and Arcane powers like they did with the Ogre Magis, but if that is so, it might be another explanation as to why the Reds were so wicked in the Second War. The Red Dragons are among the most honorable dragons. They believe and uphold honor more so than any of the other flights, taking their charge exceptionally serious. They believe in loyalty, courage, honor, bravery, commitment, dedication, persistence, and preservation, making them the most idealistic, but at the same time, unrealistic flight. This was brought to the Red Flight's attention during the schism in their own flight, when Alexstrasza was kidnapped by the Horde. The Reds had to deal with their own flaws firsthand, and realized how their beliefs hindered their own existence. But thanks to the mortals of Azeroth, they were able to avoid facing this problem head-on and finding an appropriate solution. Though they still believe in their perception in Honor Code, they are more alert of its consequences more so than ever before. The Reds are also rightfully and greatly proud of their heritage, remembering their long-lost history and ancestry, the Reds who led the other flights for centuries in the Age of Dragons. The Reds interact the most with mortal beings, exposing them to the world. Though very wise for being dragons, it is their honor codes that truly inspire mortals to follow and dedicate themselves to the Red Flight. Of all the things that could be said about the Reds, I would have to say it is their unwavering loyalty and dedication to both their aspect and her cause that blinds them from the sacrifices that they will suffer. And this concludes the trivia of the Red Dragonflight. Thank you for watching today's episode. If you want to see more episodes and comparisons, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to message me. Also, don't forget about our new Facebook page that is up and running. The link to that is in the About box. Until next time, I will see you on the next episode.